Welcome to Nasero's YouTube channel. In this video, we are tackling a critical scenario that anesthesiologists and ED healthcare workers often face. Securing an emergency IV access in a challenging patient where timing is of essence for patient safety. Imagine this scenario. You are administering general anesthesia for an obese 50-year-old patient having abdominal laparoscopic surgery. Her blood pressure gradually decreases to below 80 systolic and you administer 100 mics of phenylephrine. The blood pressure continues to drop and now it's 75 systolic and the heart rate is 70 beats per minute. You give another 10 milligrams of ephedrine now without a response to the treatment. You lower the sevoflurane from 2% inspired concentration to 1.5 and administer another dose of ephedrine, but this time you double the dose to 20 milligrams. But the blood pressure and heart rate is not responding to the treatment. You then diagnose the cause of the lack of response as you reach underneath the surgical drapes and you diagnose that the IV line has been infiltrated and therefore you don't have the response to your vasopressors because it takes some time until they work injected subcutaneously where your IV catheter now is. Now you have a hypotensive patient without an IV and you recall that placing the IV in the forearm was difficult in this patient due to obesity in the first place. Your typical options are look for another IV in the upper extremity, external or internal jugular vein access, but obviously this patient will be quite difficult to access anything around the neck area. The issues are also that the IV stick was difficult to begin with in the upper extremities and even now with vasodilation under anesthesia, you don't see any veins in the upper extremities, visible or palpable. And of course, you can always use ultrasound or reach out for EJ or IJ, but these options require some time leaving the patient without urgently needed therapy. So watch the video to see how we bridge this acute situation with an IV catheter placed in a cephalic vein until more conventionally placed IV catheter could be inserted using ultrasound guidance in the upper extremities. Let's watch the video. Okay, so that's the vein. You may or may not be able to dilate it. Okay, but in the absence of any other choices, I'm going to bend that IV slightly. Okay, pull the skin and try to get into the system. There we go. And we have a flush back right there. Trying to feed the sin. There you go. That's a good IV that can be used for in obese patients. Very good option. You always see them on that side, somewhere around the neck. You can find them in here as well, around the axillary fold, but it's a good option. I bet you've never seen this before. No. Okay. <laughs> Good. Okay. Yeah. Now we're going to secure it. And there you go. So now we have a backup IV line. Yeah. And that was it, a demonstration of how you should keep an eye on other possibilities for IV access in emergency situations such as chest veins, veins in the shoulder area such as a cephalic vein in this situation. And keep in mind that this IV should be replaced promptly after securing an IV in a more conventional anatomical location. But it is a technique that can buy you some time for patient safety. And I'm happy to share that Nysora's Difficult IV Access book will become available on March 1st. And it will include a QRC code with a link to dozens of IV insertion techniques and difficult IV troubleshooting videos. All of these images you saw in this video are actually from the Nysora's Difficult IV Access upcoming book. So keep an eye on this channel for information on this groundbreaking manual of difficult IV access 
on Amazon.com. And if you like this video content, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to Nysora's YouTube channel so you don't miss the future videos on similar topics. Until next time, greetings from Nysora's YouTube studio.